Takayasu Arthritis. The Takayasu Arthritis is a large vessel vasculitis with granulomatous inflammation. That is the reason we can also call it as granulomatous vasculitis, principally affecting larger arteries and sometimes it also involves medium sized arteries. So, let us write points here. First is what type of inflammation it is. It is granulomatous vasculitis. So, inflammation is granulomatous inflammation. Inflammation is granulomatous inflammation. That is the reason we are calling it as granulomatous vasculitis. And the arteries which are affected are large, more common and medium sized. Medium sized arteries are more commonly involved. Large as well as medium sized arteries are more commonly involved. Large means aortic arch and its branches. Aortic arch and its branches. What are they? Subclavian artery, carotid artery and brachiocephalic artery. So, aortic arch as well as its branches are involved. That is the reason we are also calling it as aortic arch syndrome. So, it is typically characterized by, it is typically characterized by ocular disturbance and marked weakening of pulses in the upper extremities. So, ocular disturbance, disturbance and weakening of pulses in extremities. Ocular disturbance is because of the involvement of the coronary artery and weakening of the pulses is because of the involvement of the subclavian artery. right? So, typically presents with ocular disturbance as well as weakening of pulses in extremities that is the reason it is also called as pulseless disease, pulseless disease, right. Let me repeat once again guys, it is a granulomatous inflammation affecting large size arteries, sometimes it may also affect medium sized vessels. Large sized arteries means aortic arch as well as its branches that is subclavian artery, carotid artery as well as brachiocephalic artery. So, the typical manifestations are ocular disturbances because of the involvement of the carotid artery and its branches and weakening of the pulses in extremities is mainly because of the involvement of subclavian artery leads to like you know weakening of the pulses that is the reason we are calling it as pulseless disease right. It is also characterized by a strong predilection of aortic arch as well as its branches that is the reason as I already mentioned we are also calling it as aortic arch syndrome or giant cell aortitis right. So, aortic arch syndrome another name or giant cell aortitis. These are other two names for this Takayasu arteritis because of the involvement of uh, aortic arch as well as its branches, right. So, it is more common in adolescent girls as well as in younger women. Adolescent girls, adolescent girls as well as younger women. So, it is more commonly seen in girls as well as in younger women. Whenever you try to see the morphological changes here, morphological changes in the vessel wall are same to that of giant cell arteriitis. That is the reason we are giving the name called as giant cell aortitis, right? The manifestations are pretty much uh, common over here. And what is the most common artery to be involved even though we have the branches of the aortic arch that is subclavian, carotid, brachiocephalic, the most common artery which is involved is the subclavian artery and this is the MCQ point. 
that is responsible for arm claudication right we can see the list over here arm claudication lowering bp and weaker pulse in upper limb when compared to that of lower limb so what are the important manifestations let me write once again over here what are they arm claudication right arm claudication what about the blood pressure blood pressure will decrease in the branches of the subclavian artery that is in the upper limb that is lower bp decrease in the bp when compared to that of uh, lower limb blood pressure and weakening of the pulse also weak pulse right all these are because of the involvement of subclavian artery arm claudication decrease in the blood pressure weakening of the pulse in the upper limb is because of involvement of subclavian artery so other vessels which are involved or we already know common carotid artery right arch of aorta sometimes abdominal aorta celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery renal vertebral iliac pulmonary coronary all these are affected but least common more commonly seen in arch of aorta as well as its branches right this is what you need to remember for your exam when we discuss about uh, the diagnosis uh, or the criteria for the diagnosis of uh, the takayasu over here the american college of rheumatology requires the three out of six criteria what you can see in the table over here already you can see all the six over here but three must satisfy to meet the diagnosis of this takayasu arteriitis that is age at the onset that is less than or equal to 40 years claudication of the extremities must be present because of the involvement of the subclavian artery which is the most common artery to be involved in uh, takayasu decreased brachial artery pulse we already know the decrease in the blood pressure decrease in the brachial artery pulse and blood pressure difference between upper limb and lower limb must be approximately greater than 10 millimeters of mercury between upper as well as lower limb right or we can see between arms we can say and breathe over subclavian artery or aorta is another important uh, characteristic feature and arteriogram abnormality on the affected vessel so out of all this six points if three are satisfied then we can say it is the diagnosis for takayasu arteriitis now what about the morphology over here the gross specimen is showing an extensive intimal thickening with attenuation of the media and adventitial fibrosis we can see very clearly over here and if you see the microscopic findings of takayasu arteriitis it clearly shows a degeneration of the media with a dense inflammatory infiltrate including the presence of giant cells like giant cell arteriitis right this is what we need to know about takayasu arteritis and let us have a quick uh, review about uh, this takayasu over here once again takayasu arteritis affecting especially the larger vessels and uh, least commonly it may also affect uh, the medium sized vessels but more commonly larger vessels and it is the disease with granulomatous inflammation so granulomatous vasculitis is also called as a uh, takayasu arteritis affecting large sized arteries as well as medium sized arteries but least common typically involves aortic arch as well as its branches that is the reason we are also calling it as aortic arch syndrome or giant cell aortitis when we call it as like uh, syndrome of aortic arch then the branches of the aortic arch are involved over here that is common carotid artery subclavian artery as well as brachiocephalic artery but out of all these the most common artery to be involved in the takayasu is the subclavian artery because of the involvement of common carotid artery we can see ocular uh, disturbances and because of the involvement of the subclavian artery we can see weakening of the pulses in extremities that is the reason we are also calling it as pulseless disease it is more commonly seen in adolescent girls as well as in the younger women 
and because of the involvement of the subclavian artery which is the most common artery to be involved in the Takayasu, arm claudication, lowering of the BP that is brachial like you know artery pressure is decreased and weakening of the pulse and pressure difference greater than 10 millimeters of mercury between arms all these are the important MCQ points what you need to remember for the exam when you think about Takayasu arteritis and this is what is about Takayasu arteritis.